Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's do a side by side comparison with Kden Live and Shotcut, two fantastic open source free video editors that are available to you right now. Let's compare them and see where they're strong and maybe not so strong. All right, so good place to begin is what kinds of formats and projects do the tools support? So let's start right off the bat with that. This is Caden Live. It is version 20.12.2, just so you know where I am. And when you start a new project, you can get kind of the full run of different things you can do. Anything from 4K down to HD. And also under custom formatting, I've talked about this before, there are the different formats that you can use for the short form, extremely short form content that's coming out, like the shorts on YouTube or the TikTok format, where it has to be a square or a fully vertical format. Those are all here in the 30 and 60 frame formats. Hopping over to Shotcut, and over here, we are working on version 22.12.21. All right. And in this version, when you start new projects, there's a good range of things you can set up right off the bat, which is impressive, by the way. It's actually not that different from Caden Live, um, even though it's laid out a little bit more differently. You can choose, again, the kind of project you're looking for. You get the full range of HD. You can move into the uh, 4K resolutions as well, non-broadcast ones. Uh, this is where you start getting into those kind of square formats uh, for the short form ones, the extreme short form uh, projects that you might do or the verticals down below. So again, very, very similar options of what you can do between the two. Uh, so there's really no difference there so far. It does start to branch off here in that this does appear to support hardware encoder. Uh, solutions, uh, meaning reaching into the GPU. Um, I, Upon configuring that, I was able to detect a compatible encoding uh, process for that. So we're going to try that out. I actually have not done this yet. This will be a learning experience for both of us. Getting into kind of the nitty gritty here, this is kind of the next step that I want to compare is is how, how does it play? <laughs> how does it work? And in this sense, let's look at uh, Kaden Live first. Now, it does have click and drag in with your, your media. So you can bring that in with really without any hassle into the project bin. You can organize it. It has the option of jumping between the workspaces where you can focus in on the editing piece or the effects piece. Working within the timeline, this is where it gets to be a little bit varied here in that you have your tool sets. This is not that uncommon for video editors. Um, but what starts to kind of break apart is that you have the razor tool, the pair of scissors in this case, which that kind of makes logical sense. This they, they call it the razor tool because you're thinking about traditional film where you literally cut the film that was the editing process and then you would reassemble and reappend with tape and make you know a completed reel and then that was used to make a master copy that was editing back in the day digitally we still kind of borrow that concept and that vernacular um so that makes a lot of sense when you're gonna make cuts and uh split the uh the footage bit and break them into different pieces bringing that over then to shot cut you can also do the click and drag. So I'll show you that too. You can drag things in very easily. There's not really any lag or problem there. Um, and then we can bring it into the timeline. If I were to use the cut, it literally cuts it. <laughs> and that can be very confusing, especially if you've been using other video editors where typically the razor blade or the scissors is to make a, a split in the video. That's not quite so intuitive. If you're gonna be doing cuts, the only way I can see to do that is to actually use the split at playhead. Um, and the playhead is kind of the scrubber where you would drag that and you do the playback and all that kind of stuff. That's a big one though, because that's how you do editing. A lot of these other tools do play out very similarly. Otherwise, let's look at how we use effects. I'm gonna work on an effect here. It's called the transform under the effects tab. You've seen me go there before. Uh, I'm going to look for just that that transform effect. It's a very powerful image manipulation or layer manipulation rather where I can take it and I can move in and reshape and I can rotate and I can very easily create keyframes along the keyframe timeline. And when I do that, it will actually create the tween animation for me when that happens. So that made a lot of sense. Well thought out. You can see both timelines, both the video editing and the effects timeline all at once. 
works out really well. Let's look over to Shotcut, and there's some options there on our clip. You have to select it, and you need to add the plus. We're going to do a similar thing in Shotcut. What I just did is called Size, Position, and Rotate. Actually, I'm going to double click it, <laughs> and that adds it on. So we have similar controls here where we can rotate and we can zoom and we can move in and out and do different things. You do have a lot of good control within the frame itself where you can, similar to Caden Live here, you can resize. You can actually rotate, I think, easier here with using the graphical control. I wish Caden Live had that. Now, working on the keyframes themselves, this gets a little tricky. There is a keyframes timeline way down here, or you can hop over to the effects, uh, which kind of brings out both timelines. That can be easier to work from sometimes, uh, like I mentioned over in Caden Live. Where this gets a little fun now is you have two different sets of what they call keyframes here in Shotcut. You have the effect start, which is actually here is called the filter start. And then you have the end point, which is the filter end. You can have them start and stop wherever you want to. And then in between, they have these things called the simple keyframes. You can only have a start and an end for that. Kind of like where you have the, the filter starts and the filter ends. Same thing for the keyframes. You only get those two keyframes, which I think is a little limiting. But what the way they use it here is they use that as a way of easing, which it can give you a bit more of a graduated effect, um, which it does very well here. If I were to play that, you can see how it works with that. It doesn't make it very stark. It actually works on it and makes it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing when it does that. And it does not have the ability to, to make multiple keyframes like Caden Live on the same clip. So then the last thing to really work on here is we have two very similar projects Let's look at how they output. Again, going back to Caden Live just for a moment, we can use the render. And I'm going to use kind of this, this MP4. I've made a slight tweak to it, and I talked about using presets with that just to briefly, briefly show you what I've done. Uh, this is using something called UltraFest. It uses presets. This is very common with the MLT process, which is what they use for rendering and exporting uh, that technology behind all these tools. Um, they break it down to presets. Typically it uses uh, very fast. I'm using ultra fast because I don't see any issue. As long as I keep the frame rate consistent, really there's no problem there. It actually goes faster. So I'm using ultra fast. That's why this is different from the typical one. I call it speed. And also what I'll do is I'll tack on parallel processing. I'll tack on six more threads. So we have a total of 12, and that typically works very efficiently to get out a clip. All right, so just for a little bit of benchmarking here, we're going to call this Hayden Live Test 1 and render that. And it should tell me how well this works. All right, this is just a little bit over three seconds in footage. That finished out in six seconds. Okay. Let's go over a shotcut. All right, so same idea. We already have an effect applied. Really the same effect in theory. It's the same project length, the same clip. Clip that was recorded uh, untouched by either of these previously. So we're going to do export that's up here. And... We're keeping all these things the same. We're using the hardware encoder just to see, kind of putting it somewhat on parity with the parallel processing. Uh, but this is theoretically using the GPU. So let's do that. And I am going to export this file. All right. It gives me the opportunity to put it somewhere. So it assumes I'm using the project name. I'm just going to change that slightly. Shouldn't use up that much space. <laughs> so that took 58 seconds there. But just in case, let's take one more look at it here. And what I want to do is I want to go into advanced. Okay, so parallel processing is on for this as well. Doesn't let me determine how many threads I can use. Here, this is what I want to do. 
So I want to just see if perhaps instead of medium, I want to see if maybe I can do ultra fast and see if that makes any difference here at all. Otherwise, let's do a second test here. Shot cut test two. So actually, that looks like that was about the same. Even with trying to tweak down the preset, uh, the amount of output time was identical. So that did not make any difference at all. Devil's Advocate here, we'll try without hardware acceleration, just because I mentioned that was something new, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. All the same things otherwise. Um, let's try one last time here. Wowee, look at that. <laughs> Well, that was much more comparable, so I guess we can safely say that the hardware acceleration does not play out well, at least not right now, <laughs> under these conditions. So really, that was very comparable. Kaden Live was just a hair faster uh, using those settings, so I think it has a slight edge there, but not by much. Looking at these two and comparing these two, apart from the editing interface, which can be a big deal because if you have to work quickly, if there's might be a little bit more of a learning curve with Shotcut. Having said that, it does handle the effects processing very well, and the render output is comparable at the very least. So these two are very useful tools, depending on how you want to do and how what you want to work on, uh, because it does have that offering of that nice gentle easing, which I think looks a lot tighter uh, than Caden Live in that case. So could be worth a try. They're both free. You lose nothing by giving them a shot. So go download them. I'll put links in the description below and, and give them a try. All right. That's really the whole thing here. And I hope that's useful for you to see these two tools side by side and what they can do and sometimes what they can't do. Uh, but hopefully that speeds you up and speeds you along to come into a tool that's going to work for you and get things done. I'm Nate. This is Floral Learning. And please give me a thumbs up if this was useful. Subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment ask a question, and we'll be back at the next video.